Thank you for joining Debbie's Dream Foundation's Curing Stomach Cancer webinar. Today's webinar is on nutrition with registered dietitian Layla Silverman. I am Britt Aaron, Programs Director for Debbie's Dream Foundation Curing Stomach Cancer, and I will be moderating today's webinar. We would like to thank our nutrition sponsor, Bristol Myers Squibb, for making our nutrition program and this webinar possible. We would also like to thank the staff at Memorial Cancer Institute and Public Aprons Cooking School for teaming up with Debbie's Dream Foundation to make this project possible. We hear from our patients often that nutrition is one of the most important topics, and especially it's, it's hard to eat during the holidays. With all of their support from Memorial and from Publix and all of their hard work, we were able to record four free nutritional videos at the Publix Aprons Cooking School in Plantation, Florida, and they're now available on our brand new nutrition page. So we invite you to check that out, um, and as part of, of that project, we're also extremely excited to bring you the nutrition webinar today. So first, I'm going to share some information about stomach cancer and Debbie's Dream Foundation and why we're here. Um, and then we will hear a presentation on nutrition from registered dietitian Layla Silverman from Memorial Cancer Institute. And the presentation it will be followed by a question and answer session. You can type your uh, questions into the chat box below that appears in the webinar menu. And then we'll address those questions at the conclusion of the presentation as time allows. In addition, the recording of this webinar will be accessible on our website in the lecture library, and I'm also going to make it available on our nutrition page. So just a few facts about stomach cancer. Stomach cancer it was estimated in 2018 that more than uh, 26,000 Americans would be diagnosed and about 11,000 would pass away. Uh, most patients are diagnosed at stage four when the five-year survival rate is only 5%, and the incidence rates in younger populations has increased. Uh, Yet yeah, many know very little about this deadly disease. Uh, there's more research being done um, now than there was 10 years ago when Debbie uh, founded the organization. Pictured here is our founder of Debbie's Dream Foundation. Debbie was diagnosed with stage four stomach cancer in April of 2008. She had no risk factors for stomach cancer and her symptoms were really, really vague. At the time, she was told that her chance of being alive in five years was only 4%. She endured harsh chemo regimens and targeted treatments and experienced many, many recurrences over nine and a half years. Unfortunately, Debbie passed away on December 23, 2017, at the age of 50. She dedicated herself to helping others with stomach cancer by raising awareness and providing resources and education. She founded Debbie's Dream in April of 2009, and as an organization, we're a member of several advocacy coalitions, including the Deadliest Cancer Coalition, the Patient Equal Access Coalition, the State Patient Equal Access Coalition, and One Voice Against Cancer. Debbie served for many years as a patient advocate on numerous committees and task forces. Now, as an organization, DDF will continue, of course, her important work and legacy. It is our mission to uh, dedicate the foundation to advancing uh, funding for stomach cancer research, raising awareness about stomach cancer, and providing education and support internationally to patients, families, and caregivers. Our ultimate goal is to make the cure for stomach cancer a reality. You can learn more by visiting our website with the uh, website below, www.debutstreet.org. In a few short years, we've achieved many, many great milestones. We have 29 chapters across the U.S., as well as chapters in Canada and Germany, and events are ongoing around the country. Our PrEP program, our Patient Resource and Education Program, helps patients, their families, and caregivers around the world by matching them with survivors and caregivers using disease-specific criteria, including staging, biomarkers, uh, location, and so that's our mentor program. And a part of the PrEP program is hosting educational webinars and symposia like this, um, and our website contains uh, tons of in-depth information about stomach cancer that can be translated into many languages. Uh, we also have provided a million dollars in research grants uh, this year and uh, advocate each year during our Stomach Cancer Capitol Hill Advocacy Day to add stomach cancer 
to the Department of Defense's peer-reviewed uh, cancer research program. Uh, so we'll be returning to Washington, D.C. next February on the 10th and 11th to help maintain funding for researchers. These efforts have resulted in nearly $18 million being awarded over the last three fiscal years. So please consider joining us in February in Washington in 2020. Uh, for more information, you can go onto our website under the heading Take Action. This is a current snapshot of our website. Under our resources, we have tons of resources under there from our nutrition page to our uh, lecture libraries. So we definitely invite you to uh, check out our website. Here also you can see tomorrow we have our golf tournament in Fort Lauderdale, and then we have one more webinar this year on precision medicine on December 6th. And you can see uh, those under the events section of our website. Here is the contact information. We're headquartered in Plantation, Florida. Our office hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, also on the slide are important phone numbers and email addresses you can use to contact our office and our staff. And uh, if that information is also on our website, so you can check it out there. Um, so without further ado, uh, we will begin our presentation with registered uh, dietitian Layla. I want to introduce Layla. Um, we were so excited to team up with the Publix and the Memorial Cancer Institute teams to bring you this wonderful, amazing nutrition project this year. Um, we were able to record, like I said before, four free nutritional videos, uh, eating around the holidays, and um, Layla offered to do this webinar for us today. So uh, just a little background, Layla's a dietitian and board certified specialist in oncology and nutrition. She's been practicing for 15 awesome years. <laughs> she graduated from uh, Florida International University and completed her internship with the Florida Department of Health. Um, so she is now an oncology dietitian, like I mentioned, at Memorial Cancer Institute and loves helping patients during cancer treatment. Layla's goal is to translate the evidence-based nutrition science into practical advice for patients. Uh, so Layla is also an active member with the Florida Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, currently as the awards chair and previously as the public policy coordinator for the state of Florida. In this role, she was able to advocate for nutrition and public health programs within our state of Florida and on the national level with Congress members, which is just super cool. Um, so like I mentioned, we teamed up with the registered dietitians, and we couldn't thank you enough. Uh, Layla's featured in our Butternut Squash Apple Soup uh, recipe video with Chef Ray from Publix, and it's super fun. Um, so we'd like to thank Layla for teaming up with CDF for this project, and we will now turn the webinar over to you. Thank you, Britt, uh, for that awesome intro um, and for all the work you do with Debbie Stream. Uh, so today I'm here to talk to you about eating around the holidays for our gastric cancer patients. This can be a very challenging time, so I hope to be able to make it a little easier for you. Just a second, if I turn the slide. So today's topics, we're going to start off with some nutrition considerations and recommendations uh, for during and after uh, treatment. Uh, then we're also going to give you some tips for developing a holiday menu, also some tips for enjoying the holidays, and we'll have some time for questions and answers. So to get started, uh, there are some nutrition rec uh, considerations we must take into uh, account here. Uh, one of the main things is preventing dumping syndrome post-surgery. Uh, so what is dumping syndrome? Dumping syndrome is usually nausea, vomiting, and or diarrhea. Uh, one of the main things that we focus with our gastric cancer patients is small frequent meals. I cannot emphasize that enough and we will go into detail about what a small meal means. Um, another thing that's also very important is drinking bet between meals as opposed to with your meal. Uh, and obviously also trying to avoid those carbonated drinks. Uh, and we also focus on avoiding foods that are high in sugar or, high, or have a high sugar content um, and limiting the fat and the fiber in a lot of your foods as those two things do take longer to digest. Uh, and we don't want the food sitting in your stomach if you had, you know, 
a partial gastrectomy or in your intestines for too long as this may cause uh, symptoms. So let's start off with diarrhea. Uh, the BRAC diet has been around for a while and we usually try to get patients on that if they're having the diarrhea, but it doesn't have to be for very long. It's only for a couple days of that. Um, then we gradually work with our patients to add some protein foods, keeping the foods low in fiber as well, and limiting dairy for as long as they have the diarrhea. Uh, fluids become very important during this time. So we focus mainly on fluids with electrolytes. Uh, Gatorade is one of the most common uh, electrolyte drinks. Uh, but there's also Pedialyte. Pedialyte works very well. And for the patients that are looking for something more natural with less sugar, uh, then we can uh, recommend also coconut water. We can also do uh, broth, as that counts as fluid, and um, jello. Coconut water is a really good natural electrolyte replacement drink. It's very high in potassium, and that's one of the main reasons why we uh, recommend it. Um, next, let's talk a little bit about nausea. Nausea is uh, very, very difficult for patients. Uh, you know, on top of taking your, all of the medications that your doctor has recommended, there are other things you can try as well, like, for example, some ginger or mint teas. Those work very well. Uh, again, small, frequent meals, and we'll go into detail about that. But one of the main things I try to tell patients about nausea is, going too long without food. That just makes the nausea worse. So even if it's just one cracker, one pretzel, if you can try and have that every couple hours, that really, really does help. So, you know, simple starches, pretzels, breadsticks, uh, plain noodles or pasta, a piece of toast, just trying to get something in, in, in your belly um, to help you feel better. And obviously, if you're nauseous, you're going to try to avoid foods that have very strong um, odors. Sometimes uh, sticking to foods that are cold may be better, um, as the anything that's steaming can exacerbate the nausea if it has a strong odor. Poor appetite and early satiety, they go kind of hand in hand. Sometimes um, patients complain that their appetite isn't good, but it's really the problem that they're having is early satiety. So again, we work with them on coming up with some ideas for small frequent meals. Sometimes those meals have to be every one or two hours, uh, depending on where they are. Um, whatever it is that they're eating needs to be high in calories, high in protein. So we focus on giving them ideas that are high, um, that are calorically dense and they're high in protein. Um, sometimes when you don't have an appetite or you get full, uh, you know, after a couple of bites, drinking something is easier than eating. So we also work with patients on making smoothies, either homemade smoothies or they can choose a commercially prepared um, shake. Especially if they're tired, sometimes there's just not enough energy to prepare something elaborate. So um, there are many plant-based options available that are already prepared, but if they're willing to make a homemade shake, uh, we work with them on coming up with something simple. Fatigue is another major issue with our patients, and a lot of times it might be because they're anemic, so we always ask patients to check with their doctor and see. Um, but if they are anemic and they need extra iron, uh, we try to get them to focus on foods that are rich in iron, such as your meats, like chicken, turkey, and fish. Uh, green leafy vegetables are also a good source of iron, although sometimes they come with a lot of fiber as well. So depending on whether you're able to tolerate that much more fiber or not, um, you kind of have to work through that. Spinach is one of those that are easier to digest, so that's why I put it on here. Um, nut butters are also a good source of fiber. You want to make sure you're choosing the creamy nut butters as opposed to chunky, so you get less of the fiber. Um, cereals are also fortified with iron. For example, cream of wheat is a really good source of iron. You always want to make sure you're looking at the labels 
uh, to, to see if it's a good source of iron. You're looking for something that's going to give you at least 20% of the daily value for iron. If it's 20% or more, then that's a good source of iron. And remember, too, that vitamin C helps absorb the iron. So if you're having a meal and you're eating some type of meat, um, make sure you're either drinking a little bit of juice with that or eating some vegetables that give you vitamin C so it helps absorb all that iron. Um, another thing that helps with fatigue is trying to stay as active as you can. And it doesn't mean going to the gym, but just uh, even if it's, you know, walking your dog or checking the mail, getting yourself up and out of bed is important to try to uh, combat the fatigue. Uh, you know, making sure you're staying on regular bedtime and rest periods. Give your body time to rest during the day, but also give your body time to stay as active as it can be. Taste changes uh, are very difficult also for our patients um, undergoing treatment. Sometimes if you're having that metallic taste, what we try to get patients to do is avoid using silverware and use plasticware instead. Try not to drink anything from a can or eat anything that was in a can um, to help uh, exacerbate that metallic taste in your mouth. Sometimes lemon drops, gum, or mints kind of help a little bit as well. Practicing good oral hygiene also helps. So maybe uh, rinsing your mouth frequently, and it can be something simple uh, like salt, baking soda, and water. Uh, that works very well, and it kind of clears your palate when it comes to your taste. Um, that can help. And also another thing that we focus on with patients when it comes to taste changes is increasing the flavor in the food they're eating, uh, trying new seasonings. Uh, sometimes tart flavors work well, so anything that's acidic or bitter or sour can help a little bit, or sometimes it's the opposite, adding a little bit of sweetness to your food. Um, so it's a matter of trying and figuring out what works best for you. Um, it might be something that you normally wouldn't eat, but during treatment it might taste better to you. So try different seasonings, try to marinate your, your, your foods, your meats ahead of time to add a little more flavor. Um, and sometimes just squeezing a few drops of lemon onto your food before you eat helps a lot with the taste changes. So it's, it's a matter of trying different things and figuring out what works for you best. Um, mucositis. So if you're having mouth sores, um, on top of taking the medications that your doctor has recommended, we also uh, recommend for patients to try you know, a simple oral rinse, like I mentioned before, the salt, the baking soda, and water. It's usually about a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking soda, and a quart of water. And you mix that and you use that throughout the day. Um, another thing that we try with patients is oil pulling using coconut oil. Coconut oil has antibacterial properties. Um, and the way to do it is using about a tablespoon of coconut oil and you swish in your mouth for about one to five minutes, uh, depending on what you can tolerate. Um, and you do that a couple times a day. That can help with uh, the sores. It kind of soothes the, your, the lining of your mouth. Um, it can also help with dry mouth if you're having that. Um, but it's another way to kind of help with the mucositis. Um, and also, you're going to try and stay away from spicy or acidic foods if you have, you know, open sores in your mouth. And you're going to choose foods that are soft and moist to um, avoid damaging further. And so here we are at small frequent meals. And what does that mean? Um, small frequent meals, think of that as grazing throughout the day. Um, sometimes patients do fine with eating every three, two to three hours. Sometimes if you're just not eating a whole lot, you may have to eat every one to two hours. It just depends on where you are and your symptoms. Um, but make sure that whatever it is that you eat uh, is rich in protein and that you include a healthy fat so that you get more calories. Uh, sometimes a small meal can just be a few bites 
and that's perfectly fine um, as long as you're having that couple bites every hour or every two hours, depending on how you're feeling. So some ideas for a small frequent meal. So I start here with a few dairy products, and obviously this depends on whether you tolerate dairy or not, but if you do, you can have a low-fat plain Greek yogurt with a sliced banana. There are a lot of dairy-free yogurts out there. There's soy yogurt, there's coconut mm -hmm. yogurt. Uh, what I try and get patients to do is look at the label, make sure that it does have a good amount of protein. A lot of times these uh, dairy-free yogurts may not have enough protein, so you're looking for at least seven grams of protein per serving. Um, another option would be like the low-fat cottage cheese. You can find a lactose-free version of this at the store, and you can combine that with uh, either some ripe melon or again a banana. Um, but there's a there's you know a lot of options out there. Um, peanut butter or almond butter and crackers is another good small meal or snack. Um, and also if you really don't feel like eating something, you can always make a smoothie. Uh, you can use either lactose-free milk or some plant milks. Um, there's a, a variety of plant milks at the supermarket. You will find you know, almond milk, coconut milk, rice milk, uh, but those are usually very low in protein. So if you are using one of those, just make sure you're adding either peanut butter or almond butter to that smoothie to boost the protein content. Or you can opt to try uh, another type of milk. There's uh, milk made from green peas or plant milk that has more protein. Um, and you can find that at your local grocery store. Uh, but there's a lot of options that, out there. And the main thing you're looking for when it comes to milk is the amount of protein. Again, you want to find something that's going to give you at least 7 grams per serving. Um, other small meal ideas, you know, your good old chicken noodle soup, that would be perfectly fine. You can add a few veggies in there that are low in fiber, like carrots or zucchini and squash. Um, you can do uh, oatmeal with sliced apple and a little bit of almond butter or peanut butter. It could be a turkey and rice soup. You can also do tuna or chicken salad over crackers. Um, you know, obviously instead of mayo, you can use a little bit of avocado or even some plain yogurt instead of mayo as well. Um, egg dishes are also very high in protein, so it can be, you know, a simple omelet. Um, you can add a few vegetables like spinach, carrots, and potatoes. Those tend to be easy to digest. Um, or you can just do a scrambled egg and have it with a toast and avocado. So. We try to keep things simple for our patients, things that are easy to prepare, um, because we know a lot of times the energy to make elaborate meals just isn't there. Um, so moving on to preparing your holiday menu. So we try to put everything together that we recommend, the low fiber, the low fat, into a menu that's um, good for the holidays. So when you're choosing your vegetables um, and fruits, try to get things that are low in fiber. Um, so here I put squash, carrots, spinach. When it comes to vegetables, those are pretty good. And then fruits, bananas, ripe melons, and peeled apples would be your best choices. Um, obviously, if you're further out from your surgery and you're doing okay tolerating fiber, you can incorporate more fruits and more vegetables that have you know, more fiber, and that would be perfectly fine. But if you're still trying to cut back on the fiber or you're having issues with gas, you know, try to peel all your vegetables and fruits so you can tolerate them better. That cuts back on the fiber. Um, and then choosing a starch that's easy to digest is very important. If you're looking at labels, um, which I recommend you do, try to get things that have uh, two grams of fiber or less when it comes to your starches. Uh, we want to make something healthy, but at the same time something that you can tolerate. So regular white rice would be fine, 
but if you wanted something a little healthy, brown rice would be fine as well. It has a little bit more fiber, but not too much. Mashed potatoes would work well. The skin does have a lot of fiber, so you know if you're trying to stick to something that you can tolerate better, just have it without the skin. Plain pasta and noodles work well. Sorghum is one of those grains that we love. It's an ancient grain. It's high in protein like quinoa, uh, but it's a lot of people don't know about it. So we're trying to get patients to try new things. Sorghum comes regular and pearled. Pearled means it's going to have less of the fiber, so that will be better tolerated. Um, quinoa, there's a ton of different types of quinoa. The best thing you can do, again, is check the label and make sure you're getting something that has two grams of fiber or less. And then your protein, your meats. Um, you can choose turkey, chicken, but also don't forget about the fish for the holidays. Fish has a lot of benefits. You get the omega-3 fatty acids, which are your anti-inflammatory fats. Um, you want to stick to cold water fish like salmon, cod, mahi-mahi, flounder. Um, there's many types of fish, uh, and those are also the ones that I listed there are also the ones that are lower in mercury um, because that's a very common uh, question we get when we recommend fish is what about the mercury? So these are lower in mercury. Uh, seafood is another option as well. You don't get as much of the omega-3s, but you still get a good quality protein from shrimp and lobster and crab and things like that. Um, if you're trying to keep your diet plant-based, some uh, options for plant-based proteins would be your tofu um, or a high-protein grain or a bean if you're able to tolerate that amount of fiber. Um, so like the sorghum that we talked about, quinoa, there's a ton of other ancient grains. There's farro, there's kamut, barley. So if you're able to tolerate a good amount of fiber, then you can try those grains. Uh, when it comes to red meat, we still do try to get patients to limit the red meat as much as possible. Uh, you also want to try and avoid the processed meat as much as possible. So red meat, the recommendation is less than 11 ounces a week. And for processed meats, is the least amount possible. So what are processed meats? Processed meats are your bacon, your sausage, your deli meats. Those are the ones you really want to try and limit as much as you can. And then lastly, seasoning your foods. Uh, your food does not need to be planned. You need to add some seasoning to enjoy it. Um, I chose a couple of different uh, herbs and spices to talk about. Turmeric is very popular. Um, it's a member of the ginger family. It's anti-inflammatory. Um, and it's always better absorbed when it's combined with a little bit of fat. So, you know, if you're cooking, uh, your chicken or your turkey, you can always season it with the turmeric that will give it a little bit of fat for, for good absorption. Um, but it also can be used in teas, in soups, and in egg dishes. It goes very well with egg dishes. Another uh, spice that we recommend is ginger. Ginger is also anti-inflammatory. And we, as we mentioned it before, it's good for nausea, but it also can help with gas and cramping, which is a very big problem with our gastric cancer patients. Um, it can also help stimulate your appetite. But remember, you only need to use a little bit. It's a very strong uh, herb, so make sure you only use a little bit at a time. Um, you can use it in marinades and stir fries and also in tea. Ginger and turmeric are both roots, uh, and they you can buy both of them fresh. They sell them at the supermarket, um, and you can keep using it fresh as long as you freeze it. It's a good way to store it. So use a, the little bit that you need, and then store it in your freezer so you always have a fresh source of ginger and turmeric. Sage, uh, we love sage. It's part of the mint family. It's uh, also been shown that it's good for gas, bloating, and diarrhea. So we like to recommend patients to use sage. It can also help, help stimulate the appetite. And you can use it to season, to season soups, uh, roasted veggies, 
and you can add it to a dry rub to season your meats as well. So it's an excellent, excellent seasoning and it has an excellent aroma. So it's something good to try. So putting everything together, um, me and my team of dietitians here, we came up with a menu uh, for the holiday. It's butternut squash apple soup. Uh, the entree was a turkey roulade stuffed with veggies and pearl sorghum. We also had a green bean uh, dish. And for dessert, we had chocolate fruit puffs. We made some videos, so I hope you're able to uh, watch those. They were very, very fun. And you can get the recipes when you watch the videos. So other tips, remember when you're cooking uh, your holiday menu or even in general when you're cooking, using coconut oil is beneficial. It's an oil that's easier to digest uh, because it has the medium chain triglycerides. So it's easier for your body to break it down and absorb. Um, another tip would be to use, to make sure you're using herbs and seasonings. Like I said, I cannot stress it enough. Your food does not have to be bland. Please add some flavor to it. Um, if you're making a savory dish, you can always use ginger, sage that we talked about, turmeric, but also oregano, rosemary, parsley, basil, you know, fresh herbs are awesome. Um, if you're making something sweet, cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, cloves are amazing. They have a very special flavor. It goes with a lot of different fruits if you're making something sweet. Um, and Cinnamon is one of the main ingredients in pumpkin spice, so that's very popular this time of the year. Other holiday tips. So when you're having your holiday party, don't forget to eat breakfast that day. Don't forget to eat lunch. Remember, small frequent meals are very important. So make sure you don't skip your meals. We don't want you to end up having a large dinner and not being able to tolerate it well afterwards. Um, make sure that if you're going to a holiday party that there's food there that you can tolerate or you can always offer to bring a dish that you know you do well with. Um, as soon as you get there, I always tell patients, make sure you have something to drink first. And I don't mean an alcoholic drink. I just mean it could be just plain water, coconut water, infused water if you want to get fancy. But always start off with having something to drink because remember, you have to drink between meals. Um, choose an appetizer and have that as a snack before dinner. Um, and then at dinner time, try to start off by eating your favorite dish first. Make sure it has a little bit of protein. And that's just in case you get full fast. You've already eaten something that you really, really enjoy. Remember, you got to drink between your meals and make sure you choose something that's not carbonated, non-caffeinated um, for better tolerance. If you are thinking about alcohol, make sure you ask your doctor to see if that's an option for you. Um, and remember to enjoy the time with your family and friends. There's lots of non-eating activities that happen during the holidays. Um, so make sure you try and enjoy the time. And my take home message for you would be to choose things that are easy to digest. Like I said, low fiber, low fat, non-sugary. Um, there are plenty of options up, out there, so don't think that you're too limited. Um, and more important than anything, enjoy your meal and don't feel guilt, guilty about anything that you eat. Holidays are supposed to be a happy time, so I hope I made it a little easier for you, and thank you for your time. If you have any questions, let, let me know. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, Leila. I think those were some really great tips around the holidays. Again, we got so many questions from our patients uh, calling us and asking us, what do we do, what do we do? And we typically direct them to the nutritionist at their hospital. And I do want to point out that uh, the registered dietitians at Memorial Cancer Institute can only treat patients at Memorial Cancer Institute. So we definitely encourage you to work with the nutritionist um, at your institution where you're receiving your treatment 
treatment. Um, and unfortunately, we're out of time for questions today. But Leela, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your expertise with, expertise with us today. And I just want to go ahead and thank our nutrition sponsor again, Bristol Myers Squibb, for making this webinar possible. And of course, again, to our partners at Memorial Cancer Institute and the Publix Aprons Cooking School for making the, the uh, video recipes available to us. And again, they're on our website under our resources section on our brand new nutrition page. So just as a reminder, we have a couple events coming up tomorrow. We have our Fort Lauderdale Annual Golf Tournament and our last webinar of the year. It'll be our seventh webinar of the year. We'll be on Precision Medicine with Dr. Craig Lockhart. So we hope you can join us for that. And we just want to thank you for participating in today's webinar on nutrition with Layla from Memorial Cancer Institute. Um, all of our uh, webinars are in our lecture library, and this will also be available on our nutrition page. And we would love to hear from you. We'd love some feedback. So there is a survey at the end of this webinar uh, when you log out, and there's also um, uh, for any questions, you know, our information is there. You can contact me. I'm Britt Aaron at programs at wstream.org. And for more information, you can always visit our website at www.wstream.org. So this will conclude today's presentation. We hope you found it helpful. And thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day, guys.